Hello, I'll walk back to John Bill's iconic military models. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be opening up this uh, Prince Eugen. This is a brand new 1 200 scale battle cruiser or cruiser. This is made by Okra. It's like I say, it's only just re recently been released, and I'm really excited to uh, get working on this. As people know, I absolutely uh, love naval warfare and wooden kits, especially. I really enjoy the process of uh, taking a, a lots of random sections of wood. And turn it into a, a beautiful naval craft. Okay, so straight away you can tell it's an absolutely huge kit. I'm about to uh, set my cameras up in the different angles to try and get all the all the box in for now. It's going to be even awkwarder when you start to build a, a ship that's a, a good metre long. We've got a, quite a large selection of parts. I'll get them all out and then we'll uh, individually look at all the parts and the pieces. So we get a real nice large collection of laser cut parts that will go up to make the uh, superstructure and all the keel. Also I've got a nice mixture of uh, MDF and uh, like balsa wood and then a different selection as well. So yeah I'm going to really uh, enjoy working on this. So the parts aren't aren't uh, labelled or printed or any kind of number on. But right at the back from the instructions we'll get a nice little uh, layout guide so you can kind of identify every part that comes with a kit with this, uh, with this guide so that's quite good. It's quite straightforward when you're working on the larger parts to start with but I say a little bit later on when the uh, parts get a bit smaller that's when you're probably going to use this guide a lot more. I've got quite a few sheets of photo edge, which is nice, and it's been nice to actually work on a 
the larger scale forward ship after been working on them on 350 scale for quite a while so yeah a little bit more easier to uh, handle and manipulate yeah hundreds and hundreds of parts it looks around about nine sheets in total in thought which we'll go into them into more detail as we get into the build I say what I'll probably do once I've opened all these up and gone through them and I'll probably sort them and organize them into different little bundles it's got a nice big bundle there planks this is the uh the decking stock that we're going to use for the uh, the plank the deck this is a wooden deck and then we get some smaller smaller ones as well that's going to be used for different variations of detailing and we get this second one it looks like it's got some kind of metal strips that we'll probably be using a little bit later on in the build not quite sure what they are for yet but we'll find out and then we get all the uh all the planking stock a nice bundle of that and it's what we tend to get around about five mil by 1.5 in just a large collection so we can kind of keep that separate and just take them out one at a time as we're using them and then we get another bundle this has got some uh, like slightly larger wood i think in this one around about the keel section between the uh, the ribs we actually fill in quite a section of the uh, the keel which is quite nice a lot of kits i built before it's kind of left that section open but in this build it looks like we're actually going to be filling them in with blocks which makes it a little bit easier to plank so that would be quite good and then same again we've just got another collection of uh, different length dowels and different length pieces of wood that we'll just be using through the construction of the build so i've got this tube i'm not sure what what's in this one so i'll have a look oh just some i think it's plans so it looks like we've got a nice collection of plans as well. So that'd be quite good. I mean, I wish I had a, a bit of a larger room to uh, put all these up, but I'll probably just have to use them one at a time. So it's actually, uh, looks like it's a scale drawing this time. That's quite nice. And it is all like get it up on the wall. But that's uh, kind of shows you just how big it is yeah, so from point to point I can't get it in I'm getting another one which is a side view the first one's a top down view and that's to uh, to scale as well so you can see this how how big it is it's going to be a uh, absolutely massive <laughs> but, yeah look awesome on that display so also get this nice large Juicy bag. And that's another collection of all die cast parts and parts that we'll be using through the construction. A nice uh, die cast plane, die cast life rafts. And there's some different detailing parts. We actually get a die cast stern and a die cast bow in this kit, so that's quite nice. A couple of die cast actual uh, like pellet props collection of die casts not tons of die cast parts to be fair so it's not a, a, uh, it's mainly wooden construction then photo wedge on top and then obvious die cast finishing parts so that's quite nice and we get this second one as well that's uh, got a lot more parts in as well we've got obviously loads of little pins to uh, we start the planking and then there's more and more hundreds little die cast parts we've got some nice brass turned barrels so that's uh that's gonna be nice actually get loads of little portholes so let me nice drill them out just put a little what black little portholes in so that's nice the anchors like i say the more of these parts are all come into their own as we uh start the build okay so i'm bringing across the uh instructions to have a look at like i say nice a lot of kit manufacturers nowadays have gone to where they send you were uh, 
a normally a USB flash card, and then you print them out yourself. And like I say I always kind of print them out on a high quality printer, but you can never seem to get them as nice and as clear and precise as the ones that kind of come with come with kit manufacturers. And it's very much a construction of how if, if people build full kits before, you kind of get used to this where you normally just get a little reference picture. And then what you can do is then you tend to get like an instructions a written instructions manual as well where you, whatever picture you refer to and you kind of go to this uh, this reference sheet and you kind of whatever it tells you on like an a1 and then you kind of then read all the sections for a b and c and then it just tells you exactly what it wants you to do in a1 and an a3 a2 and a4 so that's pretty much how you follow these guides and now you follow these instructions where you look at the picture and then you refer to the uh, reference so as i'm looking for the instruction now it's, it's very much set up exactly how you normally start wooden ship construction where you get the keel laid down first and you start off by putting in your your first rib once you get your first rib in and then you pretty much go off that first rib and pretty much carry on the construction but I really, I, I'm, I really do enjoy full construction on these kits. This is what I was telling you where we're going to use this uh, this larger stock where on this part here, where we're going to use some of this larger stock to fill in. Where we're going to fill in between the ribs, and then we shape it. It just gives you a little bit more meat and a little bit more material to actually apply your your planking when you actually fill these uh, these in between these ribs between the keel. Okay, so once they've kind of completed the uh, the keel and then got the deck on, they actually then go on to the uh, obviously planking the deck first before you actually plank the hull. So, I mean, I am planning on building this to the instructions so it can be built as a, a guide, a step by step guide, but I may just build that in a different order to actual the, uh, the guide. So, because once you've decked it, then you've got it face down quite a bit while you plank the hull. So then you've got a good chance. I mean, you could cover your deck, and then you get a good chance of scuffing your deck up while it's being face down and you're moving it around to get the planks on. So I might just come back and do that planking after it's hulled. And I might actually just, uh, not 100% sure, but I might actually just reduce some, the overall width of the planking just to make it look a little bit I mean it looks nice like that but as most people know it's uh, the scaling will be slightly too big so I might just come back and cut them in half and just, um, just reduce the scaling slightly and this is going to be a very straightforward planking guide they're not as complex as the uh, chips of the line obviously the line the HMS victory that's just a lot more complex kind of planking but from what I said before you can normally take how you plank these onto various different ships they're very similar and we'll be able to uh, talk through that as we get into it and like I say this is the part of the same where actually we uh, fit where we fit the metal there uh, bow and actually get a metal stern so that's quite nice because it is quite difficult to shape your your bows and your and your, and your sterns out of wood it's, it takes a bit quite a bit of effort so all these uh, these metal ones that should make it a little bit less tricky but I, like I say I think I'll I'll really concentrate more on how you put in these like these dropper planks and steeler planks rather than the basic the basic planks that kind of overlap each other it's quite it's quite simple that there's overlapping planks i think people are more interested in where you have to start putting in steeler planks and dropper planks and cutting grooves i think that's where obviously the uh the skill more skill involved where you need it to really look precise to get really tight joints and once you've done all that we're going to get a nice sand and then it's going to be moving on to all the filling preparation and then adding all the detailing Obviously, add in the water line, so that'd be nice if I had to show you how to, how to uh, add your water lines. And then we almost once we've kind of primed it, painted it, sanded it, primed it, painted it, sanded it, got it all ready. And then we get a nice, obviously, we get the template guide in the kit. So, we get all this, all this template guide that we're then used to filling out all the portholes. That we do, so I've got to show you how we get this line this up onto the onto the hull. Actually, show people how you use templates to uh, 
line your parts up for your propellers. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this. And then we can then move on to the painting. And I'm actually thinking about actually completely hand painting this uh, Prince Hoy again. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I think you can still get ex excellent results, even more so on larger battleships. When you go down the scales, it's quite difficult to hide paint to uh, hide brush lines, but I think on larger scale battleships, you can probably still get away with hand painting that. So the plan is I'll probably prime it all, well, obviously with a rattle can or my airbrush, and then probably hand paint it. But we'll see how the, the build progresses. And then once we get all the hull all nice and ready, I'm going to move on to this, uh, this superstructure. And this is, I'm looking forward to this because normally, I've never really worked on a wooden superstructure before. It's I'm not normally on the other battleships I've built, they tend to have pretty much all die cast uh, superstructures. So that would be quite nice to actually work on this uh, wooden, wooden superstructure. So yeah, so, but as what I might do as well, because well, you have drying times, so I can probably do a section of video on the hull and then do a section of video on the superstructure so I'm not constantly waiting for things to dry all the time. And as we go through the build, I'll, I'll be able to talk about what what tools you need. And like I said, they're not, they're not hundreds. It's not like people have got to go out and buy hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of tools. Most of people will probably already have these, these kind of tools. It's mainly just your pliers and tweezers and your scalpel knives, dowels to form your curves for your photo etching. Say some of this uh, this photo etching where you uh, where you put it. I used to build a lot of uh, old gauge trains, so I used to have a lot of experience in soldering old brass parts. So some of these join lines, I might actually get some silver solder out and actually silver solder a lot of these join lines. And I'll show you that technique as well. So yeah, and obviously I had to had to make a wooden. A wooden funnel as well not look like a wooden funnel so that'd be really really good to show you this technique and i'm looking forward to doing that myself yeah the art of making a wooden ship not look like a wooden ship and then we get towards the end where we start adding all the detailing on So much, so many parts. And then right at the back, we get this nice uh, painter's guide as well, where we get all the reference for every colour. So that's really good because sometimes that can be quite hard to uh, determine exactly what every colour needs. And I've been supplied with this really nice actual uh, painter's kit that's actually designed for the Prince Eugen. So every colour's got a reference. So every reference number on this drawing, we can, we can then know exactly which one we need to paint to use. So that's quite nice. And then just back onto where the uh, all the reference guides are, the different parts. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that uh, comes with a kit. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. I absolutely love these big scale partnership where you build it all yourself and having a full kit as well it is good because you're not waiting for parts and you're not having to build it in a different kind of order that obviously they want you to build it, you can build it in the order you want to build it okay so i'm going to go away now and i'm actually going to start building this i'm going to build it slightly different because when i built my uh Patriots victory and i built my yamato i was kind of building it and then releasing videos but this time i want to do it a little bit different i want to get a, a nice like a uh, I want to get in front of videos so I can kind of be maybe three or four videos in front and then I'm releasing them that so then I know I've always got a video out to come out for you each week so you can kind of follow the progress anyway so I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video if you want to purchase this kit I'll put a link in the description for where uh, on the Elka's website so you can go and pick up one of them now it's going to be hugely in demand it's a brand new kit it's just been released to market so I'm assuming that they'll probably sell out really quick but there is Obviously, if you go on looking, if you just type in the Prince Eugen as well, you can find it from different kind of manufacturers as well that's selling it. 
Okay, so I've also got a builders group. I'll put a link on the description of this builds group because I post daily pictures on that. So I'll post a lot of progress pictures on, way before people actually get to see the video. So if you want to join that builders group, that'd be fantastic. And you can also share your own work on there as well. Up to uh, over 400 members now. So it's a nice little community. So if you'd like to join that. Okay, so I'm going to go away now and start building this. I'll say I hope you enjoyed the video. Love your feedback about what you think about the build, how you'd like me to work. Uh, build this what kind of videos you'd like to see it all kind of helps me to kind of get the videos more engageable for people to actually enjoy watching so anyway hope you enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up and i'll see you all again soon with the first video